Hi, this is Sunny Solanki and you're tuned to Coders column. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to turn your Pandas data frame into Tableau style UI for data analysis in Jupyter Notebook. Once you turn your data frame into UI, you can easily drag and drop various columns to create different kinds of charts. This will free you from writing code for charts during EDA process, which can save you a lot of time. Now the Python library that lets us do that is named Pigwalker. And that's what we are going to discuss in today's tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started. All right. So as you can see on my screen, I already have started Jupyter Notebook. And at the beginning of the notebook, I have instruction to install Pigwalker. So we can install Pigwalker using pip. So simply execute this command pip install Pigwalker and it will install the Pigwalker. So over here, I have imported Pigwalker as PG and printed the version. So this is the latest and stable version. Now, in order to turn any data frame into Tableau style UI, first of all, we need to create data frame. So over here, I'm simply loading a Wine dataset, which is available from famous Python machine learning library named scikit-learn. And the dataset has information about various ingredients used in creation of three different types of wine. So it's a machine learning dataset. So let me execute it and show you how the dataset looks. So as you can see, these are the first 10 rows of the data set. So these are ingredients, alcohol, malic acid, ash, and so on. And the wine type is the type of a wine, which can be class zero, class one, and class two. So all other columns, which are ingredients are uh, continuous columns. And the wine type is a categorical column. So this is the data set or data frame, which we will convert to Tableau style UI. So in order to convert a data frame to Tableau style UI, we simply need to execute this function walk from Pigwalker and give our data frame to it. So let me execute it and show you the UI. All right. So as you can see, once I executed the command, the UI is ready. So it has uh, two tabs. Let me explain you that. So the first tab is a data tab, which has various columns. So as you can see, this is the major measure and it's a quantitative column. So generally continuous columns will be identified as a measure and the categorical columns will be identified as a dimension and various uh, type of uh, columns can be quantitative. So generally for continuous, it will be quantitative and for categorical, it will be either nominal or ordinal and temporal is for time related date and time related columns. As you can see, these are the various columns and I can scroll it and go to last. So as you can see over here, so this is the dimension column wine type, which is a categorical column and it's a nominal. So that's our data set. And let's go to the second tab, which is a visualization tab. So over here, we can create different kinds of charts. So first chart that we will create is a scatter chart showing the relationship between ingredients of our data set. So I will create a simple scatter chart showing relationship between alcohol and malic acid. So we can simply simply drag and drop the columns from here. So the column names are present over here. So these are various continuous column and wine type is categorical column. So in order to create a relationship between alcohol, I will simply drag alcohol for x axis. So it will be used for x axis. And I will say y axis use malic acid. Now, as you can see by default, it's a grouping entries. So over here, as you can see, there is an option name aggregation, which I need to unselect. So once I unselect it, I can see the relationship between alcohol and malic acid. So with simply this drag and drop, we were able to create our first chart, which shows the relationship between two, two ingredients. Now, if you want to change the size of this chart, so over here, you can click on fix. And then from here, you can modify the width and height of this chart. As you can see, we were able to modify width and height. Now, what we can do further is that we can color the points of the chart based on wine type. So in order to do that, I will simply drag this wine type column over here into color. And as you can see, it colored the points of the chart based on a three different wine types, class zero, class one, and class two. Same way we can drop a categorical column to opacity as well, and it will give different opacities. 
if it can be used for different sizes as well so if you want to display points of different sizes then you can use a size and same can be used for shape as well so as you can see three different shapes are created circle square and triangle and details is about simply what details you want to display so i will again move it to wine type and there we have our first chart now if you want to modify the name of the chart so you can do it from here let's say scatter chart confirm now that it's a scatter chart so yeah so first chart is done let's create a few more chart so the next chart that i am going to create is a bar chart so i will be creating a bar chart which shows the average value of ingredient or wine type so in order to do that first of all i will drop wine type for x axis because on x axis we want to display wine type and for y axis i want to see the average values of alcohol for wine type so i will drop alcohol over here so here i have my chart where i have so currently there is no average value so this time this aggregation option is selected and in order to try different aggregation option we can click over here and from here i will select mean so now as you can see this chart has average value of alcohol per wine type so let me just modify the width of this chart and height as well right so that's our bar chart where we have average value of alcohol per wine type and if you want to color the bars then you can drop wine type over here for colors and as you can see class 0 is in class 1 and class 2 all of all are of different colors now if you if you want to sort this bars then there is option over here so by clicking on this icon you can sort it in ascending order by clicking on this icon you can sort it in descending order yeah so that's our second chart so it's that easy to create a bar chart as well now let's go ahead and create a one more chart type which is a pie chart so in order to create a pie chart we can select various chart type from here so if you click on this option by default it's auto and whatever columns you drag and drop it will create a chart based on automatically but if you want to select some specific chart type so i will select arc this time so now it's says that angle so for angle i will say wine type because i want to create a pie chart where i have a count of different wine types class 0 class 1 and class 2 count of all three of them so that pie chart i want to create so for radius i will simply select any of the ingredient i can select so i will select alcohol and instead of sum i need to select count over here so now i have class 0 59 entries for class 1 I have 71 entries and class 2 I have 42 entries and I can color them as well based on a wine type so let me drop wine type over here and as you can see for class 0 class 1 and class 2 for each arc there is a different color so this way we can create a pie chart so let's go ahead and create a few more charts all right so now I will explain you how you can create a stacked bar chart and group bar chart now in order to do that uh, i first need to melt our wine data frame so over here i have a code to melt our wine data frame so let me execute it and as you can see i have melted our original wine data frame so now i have three columns wine type ingredients value so let me show you the original wine df dot head and over here as you can see alcohol has 14.23 13.2 these values which are present over here ingredient name is alcohol and that entry will be there for each class 0, class 1 and class 2 wine types. So we have simply melted our original data frame. So now we will use pg.walk with this melted wine data frame. So let me execute this. And this is the data set. So wine type is a dimension, categorical, ingredients is categorical and the value is a continuous column. So let's go ahead and create a stacked bar chart. So I want to create a stacked bar chart which shows the average value of few selected ingredients per wine type. So as it is per wine type, I will simply drop wine type for x axis. So I have three entries class 0, class 1 and class 2. Next values are present in value column which I will drop to y axis. So there we have values and because we want uh, average so instead of sum I will select mean. 
now this is the mean value of all the ingredients so these are the selected ingredients alcohol malic acid and so on so this is the average for all of them so let me color them based on ingredients which is a categorical field so as you can see now this is the stacked bar chart of the selected ingredients so let me modify chart size yeah so these are the average value of these ingredients as you can see yeah so this is how you can create a stack bar chart so let's go ahead and let me explain you how you can create a group bar chart so just like stack bar chart we will create a group bar chart where we show the average value of those selected ingredients for wine type but the chart will be group bar chart so in order to do that first of all i need to drop wine type to x axis same way i need to drop ingredients as well on x axis this time so as you can see now the wine type is there class 0 class 1 and class 2 and these are various ingredients and then i will drop this value over here for y axis so now it's by default sum so i will select mean so now we have average value of this ingredients for wine type and let me drop over here ingredients in color so various uh, bars are colored differently right so let me modify the size a little bit yeah so that's how you can create a group bar chart now if you want to group entry based on a wine type so you can do that by changing this sequence so now as you can see that let me just modify chart type now you can see that class 0 class 1 and class 2 all are present here over here for alcohol and same for flavonoids and so on so you can do that as well or th this is the another way of creating a group bar chart right so let's move on to next data set and create a few more charts all right so the second data set that uh, we are going to use is a uh, apple ohlc data set so i have downloaded this data set from yahoo finance as a csv file so let me execute it and load the data set so as you can see the data set is information about the open high low and close price of apple stock from 2019 to 2020 and we will use this data set to create a line charts and area charts so let's go ahead and do that so first of all simply i will call pg.walk and i will give our apple df data frame right so let's check the data set over here as you can see index and then date so this time it's a dimension and it's a temporal as you can see because the date column has date time information and all other columns are simply continuous columns so let me go to visualization and create a line chart of uh, close prices so i will simply drop this date column to x-axis and then for y-axis i will drop to close and i need to unselect this aggregation so the date values are not aggregated let me modify the size of this chart so as you can see it's uh, that easy to create a line chart within few seconds we were able to create a line chart now if you want to create an area chart so from drop down over here mark type you can select this option called area type so yeah you can create an area chart as well so let's move on and create a one more line chart where we have multiple lines so in this uh, in this example we created a chart with only one line but let's create a one more chart where, chart where we have multiple lines so in order to do that we will again need to melt our original data frame so that's what i have done over here and as you can see for date and what is the open price for each date is over here what is the close price for each date and so on all the four prices open high low and close are present in this data frame so now i will call pg.walk with this data frame and as you can see the data temporal and then there is a categorical column of nominal data and nominal data and then there is a continuous column let's go ahead and create a visualization so for date i will for x-axis i will select date for y-axis i will select value so now that we have our chart ready in order to color the lines i will move this price type categorical column to color so as you can see the chart is ready so let me modify the size of this chart 
yeah so as you can see now the chart has four different lights open high low and close so this uh, is another chart and one more thing i need to do is that i need to unselect this aggregation option so yeah we have our chart ready where we have a multiple lines present in our chart all right so that's it for today's tutorial in today's tutorial i explain you how you can use python library pig walker to turn your pandas data frame into tableau style ui if you have any doubts or any questions then please feel free to let me know in the comment section if you liked our video then give it a thumbs up subscribe to our channel for more such videos and see you next time